Welcome to my channel today. This is a King Sito. It's the first time of joining us. Thank you for clicking to this. Ensure you like, comment, share, and subscribe to our channel. Now, today we want to continue on um, um, what we start, um, started earlier on. Now, I want to look at the books of accounts. I want to look at the books of accounts. Okay? So, um, recording accounting transaction is done in two main books. Account transaction in general is done in two main books. Okay, so it is divided into the book is divided into what we call the subsidiary book and the principal book of account. The subsidiary and the principal book of account. That is the two main definitions of the books of accounts. Okay, so the subsidiary book and the principal book. Now, the subsidiary book has diverse names. It is also known as uh, the book of original entry. The book of original entry is also known as the book of prime entry. Prime entry, and it's also known as um, journals. Okay, now. The subsidiary book is a place where we make first recording of business or transaction. It's a place where um, accounting records are made first before it is posted to the principal book. Okay, so the subsidiary book um, is a book in which we record transaction first before temporal on a temporal basis before it is posted to the principal books of what account. Okay, now the subsidiary books um, are not aligned with the double entry principle. Okay, they are not aligned with what the double entry principle. They do not um, follow the rule of double entry. We have done the video on double entry. If you have not seen that, ensure you check in my description or you check up here. Okay, so the subsidiary book ensures that items are recorded but not on the double entry. Um, principal basis okay now why the principal book is where I um, recording are made for a final destination purpose okay so they are made for permanent purpose after it is recorded in a subsidiary it is posted to the word the principal book of what account okay and it is made for what a permanent what basis so the subsidiary book we said other names are book of original entry or book of prime entry or the journal so in case you see anything like that it mean the same thing okay so those are the other names of the subsidiary book now let's see the books in the subsidiary book what are the books there now the first book there or some of the books there are what we call the sales day book or the sales journal the sales day book or the sales journal also have what we call the purchases day book or the purchases journal we also have what we call the sales return book or the return inwards book We also have what we call the purchases return or the return outwards book. We also have what we call the general journal or known as the journal proper or the journal. Now, the last one is the cash book. Now, these are the six books that falls under the subsidiary book of account. The sales day book, the purchases day book, the sales return, the purchases return, the general journal, and the what? The cash book. Okay? So, why that of the principal book? The principal book is made up of just two books, which is the ledger, and the cash book 
the ledger and the cash book okay why the subsidiary book is made up of these six the sales day book the purchases the sales return purchases return general journal and the cash book now i know most people might be wondering we have cash book here and we also have cash book here yes a cash book is the only book that um is both a subsidiary and a principal book why because the cash book also um applies to the rules of double entry so we said this does not apply so the cash book belongs here recorded at the first instance and also for a permanent basis okay so cash book is the book that is only a subsidiary and also what a principal book so the subsidiary book is made up of six books on it: a sales day book a purchases day book or purchases journal a sales return the purchases return the general journal and the what a cash book so we are going to see them one after the other we're going to explain them one after the other to see what they mean okay now the first one the sales day book or the sales journal now what does it mean now the sales day book or the sales journal is a book where we record credit sales only they are recorded what credit what sales only so the sales day book or the sales journal is used for recording credit sales now most time in business transaction, a retailer or a merchant might not only sell on cash basis. In order to increase his turnover, he might want to sell on credit. Okay, so a book where he records those um, sales made on credit, in which he is not buying cash, he's not getting cash at instant, is what the sales day book or the word sales journal. Okay, so. The next one is the purchases day book or purchases journal. Now the purchases day book is the book where we we'll record credit purchases. For instance, as a business person, we we'll also buy on credit. Okay, so want to buy on credit, the book will we'll record it at a situation whereby we don't pay cash is called what the purchases day book. So it is used for recording credit purchases only. Okay, now that's the second one. The third one the sales return or the return inward now most people that bought um, from us probably that you sold so on credit most time they might want to return it back based on wrong color or um, defection on the product okay or um, this product might have spoiled they might want to return it back so the book where you record um, their sales that was returned back to the seller is called the sales return or the what return inward book okay that you record the word the sales return from the word sales return meaning that they are returning from um, the commodity they've been sold that was sold before okay so that is what the sales return now the next one the purchases return or the return outward is the book where you record um those item that was previously purchased but was returned back to the supplier okay that was returned back to the word supplier record the words that purchases return now why the cash book i'll come back to the general journal why the cash book is the book where we record all cash transaction all cash transaction now remember here we said um record credit sales credit purchases um sales return if we are returning what we are bought before um what was bought from us why purchases return if we are returning what we bought before now now the cash book record everything that consigns cash whatever consigns cash in a transaction is recorded in a cash book if it is cash sales it is recorded in a cash book it is if it is cash purchases it is recorded in what in the cash book whatever consigns cash is recorded in what the cash book now the general journal or the journal proper or the journal in simple its record is the book where we record every transaction that do not connote to this that is not either a credit sales or a credit purchase or a sales return or a purchase return or cash we record it in the word general journal okay so for instance in this um, general journal we can record um opening and closing of what um, um entries or correction of errors okay we can record it there that do not tally with what was done either a credit sales 
or a credit purchase or a return inwards or a return outward or what a cash book transaction okay so these are the subsidiary books these are where you make first entry before it is posted towards the principal book which is what the ledger okay so those are the subsidiary book now let's see the principal book which is made up of the ledger and the cash book okay so the principal book like we've seen for the subsidiary is made up of the cash the ledger and the cash book the ledger is where we make final um, recording of what transaction after they have been posted to the sales um, the subsidiary book so the ledger is where we make final recording okay as a final destination of all transaction on a permanent basis okay on a permanent what basis now the ledger the ledger can be divided into two it can be the personal ledger and the impersonal ledger the personal ledger and the impersonal ledger now what's a personal ledger now the personal ledger is that ledger that contains accounts of individuals okay it contains accounts of what of individuals now this is where we have the personal ledger is where we can have the the sales ledger and the purchases ledger we can have the sales ledger and the purchases ledger now these are examples of what the personal ledger okay now the sales ledger does not connote that what we have there is a sales account or sales now the sales ledger comprises of different accounts of individual that we have sold item to on credit okay now the sales ledger is also known as what we call the debtors it's also known as the debtors ledger why the purchase ledger is also known as the creditors ledger okay so the sales ledger is where we record different customer that have bought from us on credit so we create an account to what to um accumulate all of them so that's book where we record those that bought from us on credit is called the word the sales ledger okay or it's also known as what the debtors ledger those that buys from us they are known as the debtors okay why the purchases ledger is where we record those um suppliers we what we buy from on credit okay so the purchase ledger comprises of different accounts of those we have bought from on credit okay and it's also known as what the creditors ledger okay so the sales ledger is for customer prepared on behalf of the customer why purchase ledger is prepared on behalf of the supplier okay so those two are example of what the personal ledger this is where what we make final what um, um transaction destination of what each recording okay so the personal ledger has both the sales ledger and the world that purchases ledger now also the impersonal ledger is because it is not for a particular individual now it can be divided into what we we'll call the general ledger and the private ledger the general ledger or the private ledger now the general ledger is where record uh, okay let me start from the private now the private ledger is where we record items or accounts that is assigned to only the sole proprietor or only the owner of a business okay and accounts that is for only the owners of the business that is not open to other um, employees in the business okay it is whole solely um, on behalf of um, the proprietor of a business okay and the accounts in this private ledger are um, the capital account the capital account 
the drawings account the drawings account the um loan account or even the profit or loss account i mean here so that's what the private ledger that is what private towards the owner of the business which is what the proprietor okay the capital account most time they might want not to want to um open up the exact amount a proprietor using what starting up the business okay so another one is what the drawings the amount he has withdrawn so far and the loan and the profitless account so all this consigns to what the private ledger okay so why the general ledger is where you record um accounts that are not part of either the sales and purchases and the private ledger okay and here we can record um accounts that are either the real or nominal account the real or nominal account okay now the real account i said real or nominal account now the real account are account for items we can see touch and feel they are mostly items uh, of um fixed assets like plant and machinery uh motor vehicle uh, land and building okay so they are under the what the general what ledger posted under the general ledger why the nominal accounts are mostly accounts for um income and expenditure okay account for income and what expenditure so we can have um items like um this can't receive there this can't allowed and um different what um profit or what or losses okay they are recorded under the general ledger so this is the the vision of the ledger remember we said the ledger is one of the what the books are uh, the principal book of account so the ledger has can be divided into two, the personal and the impersonal so the personal ledger have the sales ledger which belongs to debt for those that buys from us on credit why the purchases ledger contains the creditors those who are buying from on credit that's our supplier why also the impersonal ledger does not belong to a particular individual it records items it can be divided into the general ledger and the private ledger the general ledger contains items of re and nominal accounts we said the re accounts are those accounts for things we can see touch and feel for instance like the plant and machinery the motor vehicle and furniture and fittings why the nominal um accounts are accounts for items of income and expenditure okay so they are both under prepared on the heading of what a general ledger why the private ledger is um, a ledger that is prepared in which account prepared on that is account that is solely for the proprietor of a business and it can be the capital account drawings loan and profit or loss account now in some organization they do not do this again because most time the capital and amount that is withdrawn by the proprietor most time recently have been known to members of the public okay so that is for um, one part of the principal book of accounts. So another one is the cash book. Though we've talked about the cash book in the um, subsidiary book, we said the cash book is the only book that is both um, a subsidiary book and a, what a principal book. So the cash book is the book where we record cash transaction. All cash transactions are recorded in the word the cash book. So the cash book can be divided into what we call the one column cash book or what we call the single column or the two column cash book or what we call the double column or the three column cash book or what we call the triple column or or called the petty cash book okay so we have the cash book divided into the one column cash book the two column cash book the three column cash book and the petty cash book and the first one the one column or the single column cash book now the one column or the single column cash book is the cash book 
in which you record or that has a single column for amount okay that has a single column for amount now the column might either be cash or bank that are inserted together okay now for instance if we have this if if we have this this is debit and this is credit now debit means we are receiving credit means we are giving out so if we have dates if we have dates and we have particulars then we have amounts the same thing if we have dates we have particulars and we have amount it means it's a single column cash book that is there's a single column for amount it is called a one column cash book okay so that is the type of um cash book another type of cash book is a two column cash book and the two column cash book is a cash book where we have a um, column for both um cash and bank separated okay now most time you might want to have make transaction probably want an organization want to divide um it's um want to specialize or recognize that there are transactions that can go to the bank and the cash so they can have a separate column for them okay so a double column or a two column cash book is a cash book that contains or have a column for cash and bank so in the same vein in a situation like this whereby we have a single amount for a one column cash book it can be two now if it's a two column so we we'll now have for cash and bank here yeah, now we have to for cash and bank okay so with that now it is called what a two column cash book now we are going to see a detailed video on this and solve a solution on this so ensure you subscribe if you have not subscribed like comment and share this video please now the third one is a three column cash book now the three column cash book is a cash book that contains um, item for the cash column, the bank column, and a discount. And most of who might want to transact business, either buy um, from our supplier and they might give us a discount. And also once we are selling to our customer, we can also render them a discount if they are paying with cash. So the three column cash book or the triple column cash book is a cash book that have columns for cash, bank and discount okay so if we are representing here now it means we'll have column for cash bank and an extra column for discount now at the debit side it will be discount allowed why at the credit side it will be discount received okay at the debit side it will be discount allowed at the credit side it will be discount we are receiving okay so that's the three column cash book now why this one the petty cash book is a cash book where we record petty or minute or minor expenses of an organization now there are some organizations that are very large they are very large in the sense that um their cash flow especially their inflow and ad flow are in millions so most times they might want to make uh minute expenses to take care of um some um um I, some items in the company okay you might want to make um some minus expenses for stationary which might either be um let's say in units for instance if their inflow or their ad flow is in millions like 10 million dollars and 20 million dollars and they want to make an expenses that might include um let's say one dollar or two dollar so involving those kind of expenses in their major um cash book or cash flow um expenditure it might be read or they might see it as something that is minute okay so in that situation they take an extra um amount and recording for that and it is done in the petty cash book from the word petty it means record item that are what that are minute to the organization at large okay recording of item that are not the main expenses of that business okay so that is what a petty cash book well i want to see a detailed video on all this
So, so far, so good. We have seen the books of account. We said account is recorded in books. Okay, it may that be the subsidiary or the principal. So, say the sub subsidiary book is the temporal, a temporal book will record um, transactions, will record transactions for a temporal basis. Okay, and we said it's also known as book of original entry, it's also known as book of prime entry, and it's also known as journals. They are called journals because it is arranged in chronological order, and they are also called day books because they are used for what day to day transactions. Now, We've said the subsidiary book contains items like the sales day book, the purchases day book, um, the return inwards book, the return outward book, the general journal, and the cash book. And also, we saw the principal book as where we make final or final destination of what transaction. So the principal book can be divided into the ledger and the cash book. So the ledger is divided into two the personal ledger and the impersonal ledger. So the personal ledger is divided into sales ledger and the purchases ledger. So we'll say the sales ledger is well record, item of what debtors, okay? Item of debtors, those that buys from us on credit, record their accounts, everything that concerns them is recorded here. Why purchases ledger, those that we are buying from on credit, okay? We we'll also keep an account for them, it's recorded here. Now, the impersonal ledger, the impersonal ledger can be divided into, into the general and the private ledger. The general ledger will contain items of real and nominal account, while the private ledger will contain items that are solely for the proprietor of the business. Okay? So, please ensure you like, comment, share this video. And... Before we go, there's a video I want to introduce you to. We have done that as um, the introduction part of accounting and the double entry principle. It is very important you watch that, okay? So it is here or here. So let's go now. Watch that here or here. Let's go. Thank you.